Again, thank you so very much Absolute for this. Pleasure. We're really excited to talk about you um, and with you about Elvis specifically. Mm -hmm. It was one of my favorite films of last year. Oh, I saw it in theaters way too many times. He kind of rolls his eyes at me at the amount of times. times. I, I went to do a see it oh, nine times. It was nice. one of those things where you see it once and you go, I have to see it as many times on a big screen as you can see it, just because you can tell it was made with so much intention. Sure for that. it was. Thank you. Before, Thank you so much for that. Before we dive into that, I kind of just wanted to ask about you. Um, mm -hmm. For people who may not be familiar with you and your work, how did you kind of get into editing and then get into feature films? Oh, wow. Um, well, I uh, have always wanted to do um, work in the film industry in some regard. Uh, I was a definite child of the Star Wars era. <laughs> I grew up with the original Star Wars films. Uh, and I uh, just remember as a little boy um, sitting in a darkened room with uh, the, what to, uh, seeing what picture and sound and music all combined could do as a, as a collective audience experience. Uh, and I just knew, I always loved storytelling and that kind of thing, and I just knew that's what I wanted to do um, from that young age. And, uh, um, you know, uh, it was always, I guess, the pipe dream was to be a writer or a director or whatever. Um, but that was my focus. So I left school and I went to uh, North Sydney Technical College, which is where the, there was like the, the, the only second film school in Sydney besides the film school. Um, and uh, got into that straight out of school, which was, which was very lucky. Uh, and study, uh, specialised in editing, in the editing strand while I was there. And then at that point in time, the Sydney um, film industry was going through a real golden period. When I left... Um, uh, when I finished off at, at tech, uh, what was happening in Sydney was um, there's a lot of big productions being made, be they Australian productions or international productions just coming into Australia. So uh, you know, the, my first one of my first jobs out of out of TAFE was um, was on the first Babe film, and I started as a, um, a visual effects assistant and a editing assistant and a sound assistant. I sort of just moved from one from one uh, role to another, which was very lucky. And then at that time, you know, it was when the Matrix films were being made and Dark City was being made and Moulin Rouge was being made uh, the, um, and the, the Star Wars sequels were being made. And I was just, I was, it was a very much a right place at the right time on, on two counts. A, those big films were being made in Sydney and B, it was right at the time where um, the film was giving way to digital, and I was trained as a film assistant on, on film. Um, but at that time, you know, digital uh, nonlinear editing was coming in, and for, uh, for the, that little period of time, you, you needed both because the resolution of the, the digital cutting systems wasn't big enough if you wanted to have a screening there was enough resolution to have a big screening, so they would have a running film conform on, on all of those films. So I'd, I'd run the film department, and my friend would run the, um, the, the digital department, and we just moved up the ranks together, um, and eventually Force Film went away, and uh, so I switched over to digital uh, assistant editing. And then one day, um, a production manager that I used to work with um, was doing a small, low-budget film and gave me a call and said, would you like to cut it? And I'd cut short films and, and videos, uh, video clips and things up until that point. Um, and of course, that's the call that you always want to get. Uh, and so um, I did that. And on the first day of that job, there was another knock on the door from another production um, manager that I used to work with uh, and who was, um, a, she was gearing up to do the Spearig Brothers Daybreakers. Um, and so, um, I jumped on that as well, and they became the very the best of friends, and uh, and and then just you know, it's a small industry, and you named it gets out, and, and off we went, and so uh, of course um, I did work on Moulin Rouge as a visual effects editor, uh, and then in Australia when Baz did his Australia film, um, he called me up and said there's a, a couple of scenes that we just need an additional pair of hands on, so I was on that as an additional editor, and then Gatsby came along and I was on that as one of the editors, and so too with Elvis. So, so that's just kind of how Elvis came along, that's how a natural <coughs> relationship yeah. you guys already Baz is extraordinarily um, uh, uh, um, loyal and collaborative with the, he, he surrounds himself with a, with a, a family, and, uh, and so once you once you you know, you work with him, he tends to get his same collaborators back, which is great. That is, that's really cool. That's something I feel like here is really unique just because Hollywood is such a big town or Georgia mm. is such a big town and I feel like 
here people really have those relationships. Yes. So what were those kind of initial conversations about like going to work on Elvis? Like for you with Baz, yeah. Um, oh, they were great. Yeah, he's he's been talking about doing an Elvis film for a long time, uh, and um, and uh, my co-editor Jonathan Redmond, um, who has uh, who's always worked with Baz to do those sort of pitch reels that for, to, for, the, for the studios and things like that, um, they'd done a couple of those together. So by the time I came on, because I was working on another film, um, I was on Peter Rabbit two at the time when they were sort of in pre. So by the time I came on, there was a very, uh, a very precise um, and very comprehensive template of what it was that he wanted to do. Um, he, they put together a whole lot of, a lot of archival footage and a whole lot of music into just these sort of pitch reels that really sort of captured the, 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 the flavour and the style that he was trying to pursue. So I, I had I was given a very clear template of what that was going to be. And, and then he, they just started shooting, and of course we were shut down because of COVID. Um, but when we came back and got back underway in uh, September 2020, um, it was the, it was very clear what direction he wanted to go in. And, and seeing as you've worked previously with him on other projects, was this very similar in terms of approaching the work, or is every film a little bit different with what he wants out of a project or what you want out of a project? No, it's pretty. His working, his work routine is pretty. Um, it's chaotic, but it's <laughs> but, um, but it's uh, you know we we walked in with our eyes wide open as to what it was going to be and uh, and uh, yeah no as far as a working relationship is concerns we he's very he uh, relies very heavily on you know, during the shoot to sort of have things that he can he can see how things are coming together so he knows what else to go and get um, um, but uh, yeah it was it, we've become a bit of a, a well-oiled machine now um, the, the way we work and. Yeah, that, was, that and Gatsby was all pretty much the same kind of kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I can see how that would be pretty similar <laughs> yes. in terms of the organised chaos. Of yeah, organised chaos is the perfect word for it. Sometimes not so organised. <laughs> <laughs> so, in terms of throughout the shoot, what is the collaboration process between you guys like? Is he more relying on you to have? the vision based on the template and then he's coming to you to ask for what you need more or is it more he's he's pretty self-reliant on on set he likes to see how things are coming together uh, again but um but he he knows what he's after and he he's he's just a big collector of stuff and then he, he gets way 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 more than you need um so that we can go down all different sorts of sort of paths afterwards um uh, yeah, so you know, we, we, we keep in touch. I mean, on this film was a little bit different because I was in I was stuck in Sydney um, because of because of, the, because of COVID. So they shot up here on the Gold Coast, uh, and I was cutting back in Sydney. Um, but we would communicate on the phone and that kind of thing. Um, and then when we got together, uh, he's he he likes to be, and this is something that he's changed over the years. He used to be a real I'm going to sit here and we'll go through everything together kind of guy. Uh, but now he prefers to be more of an audience. He wants to be your audience. So he'll, he's got a very clear vision, obviously, and he'll tell you what that vision is. Um, but how you achieve it and how you sort of get there, uh, he leaves very much up to you um, to, to present him ideas and present him um, concepts and things. And then, of course, he'll come in and we'll, we'll work together. But, but yeah, he, he's, on this film, he was very much a... Um, a give it a go and, and, and this, is, this is what I want, how are you going to do that? Which is great. I mean, I, I don't mind either way, but that's a, he, he's, he's very giving and very generous in his, uh, in his processes. Since you couldn't be on the Gold Coast while they were doing the big production side of it as far as filming and everything like that, mm -hmm. were you very heavily reliant on referring to the script since you weren't seeing what was happening on set every day or were you more just focused on the footage that was coming to you and basing it off of yeah yeah it's a good question um no you, you, the, because they they re they rewrite stuff all the time on set the script sort of tends to get pushed one side and and you just respond to the material that you see each day and it's awesome material and you're very spoilt for choice particularly when it comes to performances by by Tom Hanks and the uh, incomparable um, Elston Butler, uh, yeah, you're very much re re responding to what what they're getting rather than what well, uh, responding to what is rather than what was going to be. You know. And as far as 
Baz films just in general, something I connect to with them a lot is his use of music. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to Elvis, that's obviously a huge part of the production. Mm -hmm. What is that side of the movie like for you? Like, what are you taking into consideration when editing or putting together a scene when it comes to having the music work as well as it does in a film like this? Yeah. Um, but for Baz, the music is, there, there's no there's no separation between music and picture and the story and, and the, the ingredients of storytelling. And the music guys have been on this for about five years. Um, they were given, we were given access to all of Elvis's original material, all the stems of a lot of his concerts, everything. So they were like, you know, kids in a candy store. They, the music guys were just, would just, they were like mad scientists. They would get all this stuff together and do all those little mashups that you hear throughout the film. Um, and that was just the most rewarding and fulfilling experience for myself and for Jonathan, the other editor, um, because we had just had, and we were all together. Uh, um, you know, when we first, when we finally came up to to um, to work together on the Gold Coast and in post production, we were all under one roof. The, the picture was under one roof. Music, the, the, the music editor was literally right next door to my room, so I could hear him noodling away on something through the wall. And say, you know, hand it over and I can cut to it. Or here's my scene that we're working on. Go and apply this music to that. So the, the, the alchemy that took place as a result of having music and, 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 uh, and picture all together was just magic. Um, and, and that's how Baz loves to work. He's, uh, he starts with music. The, there's some very clear musical templates that where they were shot, they shot to. Um, but then, of course, the evolution continues throughout the course of post production. For this film, there's a lot of scenes to me that are particularly memorable from when I watched it that I really connected with from where you're sitting, editing the film. Is there anything from this film that really stuck out to you as being particularly memorable or something that was difficult or interesting? It's a really great question because, uh, you know, I, I separate into two separate different categories. There's the big, obviously the big musical set pieces were huge and there's a lot of footage shot for it and multiple cameras and um and with baz it's never or it's not even with baz but with a film like this it's you don't just kind of stop and have a musical sequence there has, there's always some other dramatic drive going through it um and as you know so well in the film they you know um, Elvis is on the Vegas stage while Colonel Tom Parker is signing his life away and Elvis is on the Rustwood stage in the, the baseball stadium while the, the crowd are going completely mad at the defiance that he's showing the law or Elvis is in the pink suit in the, at the hayride and, and the, the, this, the, the world has never seen anything like this before so you've got to, you've got to keep those two, those, those narrative streams going of this is the most extraordinary performance the world has ever seen here is these uh, women and men going absolutely crazy because they've never seen anything like it. Over there is Colonel Tom Parker who is seeing the greatest carnival attraction he's ever seen and, how, and his mind is ticking by how he can make that work for, for him. So there's, there's all, or oh, the comeback special, you know, Colonel Tom Parker's up in the control booth convincing these NBC executives to to stay while Elvis is down and completely defying him again. So there's always several things happening at the same time, which is a real balancing act and a fun balancing act. There you, you've got loads of material to, to keep the, and, and, and the, the balance of when, when we're showing Elvis and when we're showing what's happening off stage is a real challenge. But at the same time, equally beautiful is, you know, the little two-handers between Colonel Tom Parker and Austin. And their, their performances are so, so exquisite and so delicious that you cutting those is just as rewarding because you you really want to get the best out of the performances so I mean I enjoy both sides of the challenge the, the big stuff and the small stuff um, so to answer your question uh, what's the most memorable probably I really really think we nailed something with that weave between young Elvis at the pentecostal tent and looking through the juke joint um, and indicating that with um, him waiting outside the, the hayride, ready to go in with his pink suit. Um, it was just how, because we didn't want, to just, didn't want to show his history just as a conventional, like a normal biopic would say, Elvis was born, he grew up, he became famous, then he died kind of thing. We didn't want to do that, so it was always about how can we weave this into an interesting way 
of, uh, of um, and, and make it make it interesting and fresh. So I think that what we call the weave um, was probably the most rewarding kind of thing to see come together. That's really cool. Um, I don't know how much time you guys have had to really talk to people about the film or have people talk to you about the film outside of maybe doing some award circuits that have been happening. Um, like we talked about, the production was pretty affected by COVID. It was one mm -hmm. of the first major things that was really affected. Sure was. But anyone you've gotten to speak with about the film, is there any like scene in particular they talk about with you? Have you noticed that there's something that really resonates with people more? Um, probably the scene we just spoke about. I think people, I think that the first half hour people seem to respond to as it was a real the the the, uh, the 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 template was set for what the film was going to be in that first half hour and you know that's the that's the the juxtaposition of different timelines and different things but a, a lot of people have quite often moved very much by um the comeback special his, his white suit performance <laughs> <laughs> um and then a lot of people always ask was the ending always as it is is, is that how it was always intended to be switching from from um, austin to to real elvis um and i can tell you that it was that was always the intention um but it nearly very nearly didn't happen because the that footage of of elvis which was literally taken three weeks before he died um the the uh, estate are very protective of because they think it's disrespectful to show it because he looks so bad even though he sounds exquisite um and so we very nearly didn't get that footage so what we did was we shot Austin doing that entire performance uh, just in case we didn't get it and we only got permission to use it the uh, the original Elvis footage in the last two weeks before we sent the film to Khan uh, and thank god we did because I've seen the film a thousand times and it makes me cry every single time so um, people often bring that that the that sort of that little coda that we've got up as well. So what was that first experience for you, like watching the film the first time once it had been finished, once your hands were off of it and you actually just got to watch the full? Oh, wow. Um, when it's completed? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I was fortunate enough um, to have to go to New Zealand to grade. They do what they, they have what they'd call a, um, uh, a HDR grade, which is only a few places in the world do it and only a few cinemas in the world show it. Um, but it's basically a really, really high contrast, beautifully rich coloured print of the film. Um, and I had to go to New Zealand to do that because it's either um, LA, London or New Zealand would be the only places in the world that do it. So I went over to Park Road Post, uh, uh, Peter Jackson's place, and um, we did the grade and, we, and that was probably the last time. And by that stage, the mix had all been done. So they sent the mix from LA down to Wellington and they put the two together and I sat and watched it in Peter Jackson's theatre. Um, and I remember sitting there thinking, I'll never see this film or hear this film as good as I just did just now. <laughs> so it was a real, it was a real treat to finish that way. Uh, and so that was glorious, yeah. yeah. So you can only go downhill from You can only go downhill from <laughs> Wow, that's amazing. So are you someone who can watch and rewatch something you've worked on without being kind of self-conscious of the work you've done? Like, can you sit there and enjoy a film for what it is? Or are you in your head about the I, work you've done? I have to give it a few years. Okay. <laughs> um, I, uh, only after a few years does all the, all the pain disappear and, uh, and you just... And, and you can actually watch it and think, oh, that's, that, that worked. And you forget about all the, 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 the pain and suffering that went, went into it. In fact, last night, just um, on um, Wednesday night, I was, coming, I was flying home from L.A. And I peered over the seat. And, um, and it was the most remarkable experience because in front of the seat in front of me, two people next to each other were watching two films that I'd worked on, <laughs> that I'd cut. And, uh, and it was and one of them was Elvis, and one of them, the other one was this um, Chinese movie that I didn't think it ever actually saw the light of day. <laughs> but there it was in the, in the seat in front of me. So, and, uh, and that was a treat. Like, it's a treat to see people enjoying the work. Uh, and even though it hasn't been five years since Elvis, uh, I'm already can watch it and, and sort of see the, I can see the, 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 the sticky tape and, and pins that just hold it together disappeared and, and I can see it as a solid thing now. What was the experience like for you traveling around to talk about the film and go to different kind of awards 
shows oh. and things like that. Like what? I feel like that has to be a whirlwind. It is. Just... It is. It really is. And I've literally just finished this yeah. with that whirlwind just now. Um, it, it's. I mean, it never. I never cease to be humbled. And I say I, and I know I speak for Baz and for Catherine Martin and for. My, uh, my uh, co-worker Jono um, and all, everyone, everyone who worked on the film, you never cease to be humbled by the embrace that the world has for it, particularly Elvis, and particularly because Elvis came out in, like it came out in June, so so often th those th films are forgotten about come award time, but um, it wasn't, and, uh, and though we didn't, um, we didn't walk away with anything, the fact that we were nominated for so much it was just really, it's humbling and it's a privilege and it's an honour. And people really want to talk about it, and, and I'm more than happy to do so. Because yeah, it's, um, well, I mean, we always knew we had something special on our hands with the film. Um, but yeah, once it was embraced and, and did well at the box office, and then award season um, was so kind to it, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's humbling. It is. Yeah. How was the ceremony? Like, how was actually good? Because did you go to the, were you there or at the, the, at the Oscars? Yeah, 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 yeah. How was it? How, it how was, was the actual yeah, like, it's, ceremony? It's yeah. awesome. It's, um, it's a lot of fun. You know, the, the, the 12 year old yeah. little boy in me just is like kicking myself, <laughs> like, pinching myself rather. Um, because it was, it was a lot of fun. And you know what? It was an awesome year to be there. Yeah. Because I think, you know, the last couple of years of, the Oscars have been a bit sort of they've been floundering a little bit, but this you know, cinematic film was back, and and you know um, we uh, I met a lot of the, um, the fellow nominees during the course of that had all these different yeah. events and functions and stuff, and they're all lovely guys, and so you know we're all just great big film nerds out there, and, and and we and I literally wish them all whoever won, yeah. I wish them all well um, because that was great. But the, yeah, the the ceremony was great. It's kind of chaotic. It's kind of you know, they have that. During the ad breaks, everyone just gets on gets one of these yeah. round and we get this sort of um, this time, you know, we, we, we're back live in 10 seconds, everyone sit back down again, and everyone kind of does. So it's, it's, very, it's very weird. It's very brave of them to sort of <laughs> let everyone wander around. But, um, but yeah, it was great. It was, yeah, it was fun. And the BAFTAs was fun. It's, it's all been really, it's really, been really cool. And it's all, as of, as of today, it's kind of a lot of <laughs> yeah. which I'm going to land with an emotion.